When we first started this project, I had very little knowledge about solar systems. So I just started reading and watching everything I could about the possible designs. And one of the most useful places I found is on YouTube. There are an incredible number of people that have put up videos just like this one about their system and have answered a lot of the questions I had prior to even starting. There really are quite a few options and many different alternatives available. After learning the basics of solar systems, a few questions kind of rose to the top that helped me make decisions. Uh, like, what am I trying to accomplish by installing this solar system? Uh, whether I should be grid-tied or completely independent? Whether we should do a central inverter or micro-inverters? And how do the federal and state incentives uh, work with the system I choose? And where should I buy the system? The in-depth uh, answer to all these questions is slightly out of the scope of this video, and certainly your individual situation will change uh, what the answer would be, but I would like to tell you a little bit about what we ended up doing and why. Batteries sound great initially, and they do have their place, but if you already have the grid available at your location and your state or utility company allows net metering of some sort, Grid-tied systems are absolutely the best option for lowering your cost and simplifying your install. We also chose to use microinverters instead of a central inverter, and that's because microinverters are more efficient and they employ maximum power point tracking on each panel, so you aren't as affected by shading or snow or other possible failures like a solar panel going out. There are many different choices uh, where to buy PD systems, and the one that we ultimately ended up going with is a company called Wholesale Solar. They had uh, really helpful staff uh, that put together a system that met our needs, and they also had someone on staff put together a wiring diagram that was invaluable when applying for the local electrical permit and while wiring up our system. Because we decided to do all of the work on this project ourselves, we looked for alternatives to the most common setups uh, that could be cheaper. A lot of people will use prefabricated hardware for the understructure, and that all fits together, but uh, galvanized steel piping is the most common for the main part of the structure, and it's quite expensive. So we found someone that was uh, willing to sell us some structural steel posts on Craigslist that were actually uh, much cheaper than the brand new pipe, uh, galvanized pipe. So prepping and installing those posts is where this video starts. got our uprights in the ground. Yesterday we laid down our concrete to hold them in place. We dug a ditch with a trencher for the PVC conduit. And we're just getting started putting the conduit in the ground. lower side we've got about three and a half feet above the ground on the upper side more like eleven and a half feet gives us about a 45 degree pitch on our solar panels about a 40 degree pitch excuse me 40 degrees
So the conduit comes down here to where we've set our post for the understructure of the solar panels. These were recycled poles from a uh, building over in Missoula. There we were about 20 feet long, so cut them in two sections to make our 40 degree angle. Here's where the conduit comes out. It'll get tied in somehow with uh, our solar panels when we get those in place. Pour these in concrete, so each one has a collar of concrete around it to hold it in place. So they should be pretty solid. So here's our current meter. It's the old style spinning platter type. This will likely get changed out with a digital meter that is capable of net metering, meaning it can go both directions, power in and power out. We just installed conduit to the power pole. This is where we'll tie in with our solar panels. The conduit runs about 170 feet down here to the west and then south to where the solar panels are. So the solar panels and all the equipment arrived today and we're just in the process of unloading it. We're storing it in the greenhouse until we have a time that we can get this thing all set up and we finish the racking system. 20 panels, unloading pretty easy. So we picked up three of these three inch Schedule 40 21 foot pipes, bare pipes. I need them to be 28 feet long. So what I'm doing is I'm taking one of them and chopping it up with this bandsaw here, seven feet off of one end, and then I'll be welding them back together. All right, I've got my seven foot piece on the right here and my 21 foot piece to the left. Have my joint prepped. Well, I got them welded together and ground down flat. So the next step is to take them up and mount them on top of the poles. So I've got my cross pieces secured in place. I mounted them to the top of these poles with some U-bolts that were originally meant for the axles on a trailer. I've taken these posts and used a wire brush, a big power wire brush on them to get them mostly cleaned up of the old paint. And the next step here is to spray paint all of these. All right, I've got it painted. And the next step is to get our cross pieces on and then we'll install the solar panels. So just finished putting up the cross pieces, the iron ridge rails, and they all come with some brackets here. And these little guys here, they slide in from the end, they slide up to there, and then you put the nut on there, and they have some U-bolts that connect the to the three inch pipe. So got all those up, tightened down, and we're pretty much ready to put on the solar panels. So we just finished installing all of the Enphase M215 microinverters on the Iron Ridge rails. It's pretty handy how they install here. They just have a little, a little bolt there that slides into this slot and then clips on the trunk cable here, clips on with these, with these little brackets. There's two separate sets of panels here. The one on the right here is 12 and then over there is another eight. So those eight on the left will have another cable that runs along the top and then back down and over to the right side of this pole. And then these 12 here will do the same thing and then they'll come into the same junction box so that uh, they can run together through this conduit. Next step at this point is to mount panels and pull cable through the conduit. So I'm nearing completion of the wiring portion of this project. This is the termination cap on the end of the trunk cable. Trunk cable runs down this pole there, connects into each individual microinverter, goes over and back up, and comes into this junction box, which runs down to another junction box down there, and down to the main subpanel. 
there's another run of microinverters, 12 of them over there that go into that same junction box and down to the sub panel. We also wired in our grounding lugs that ground all of our cross pieces together and ground the microinverters as well. That goes down the pole and terminates at a grounding rod. So this is the second junction box. The 12 panels and the eight panels uh, circuits go through there. They come down this one and a half inch conduit into this junction box. And we pulled this wire through a conduit and it goes down into this guy and out to the main panel. So this is how the weeb grounding system works. That little guy right there is, is our weeb and it gets compressed by the solar panel, the lip of the solar panel here as that uh, bolt right there gets tightened down. And that grounds the solar panel to the rail and then the rail up there goes to that grounding wire and goes down to our grounding rod down here. The Iron Ridge rails have a pretty handy way of connecting the solar panels to the rails. Now they've got these end clamps that connect on the ends and then on the mids they have a, a clamp that grabs both the upper and lower solar panel and then those go all the way up and then you have another one up top that's a end clamp. So I've finished all of my wiring. Uh, in from the top, I have my two leads that came from the two circuits of panels. They come down and each hook into one of these breakers. And then the grounds all come together in this little post over here. The neutrals come together there. And then they go out on these two main lugs back down and out through into my conduit. I also have this major ground wire that grounds all the equipment together that comes out of the grounding lug there on the left, goes down to the bottom of the case, and then down to my grounding rod. So here's the back of the solar array. As you can see, all the microinverters are sitting underneath the solar panels, and they're wired up into individual circuits. One comes together there, and another one comes together up there, and they all go down to my main breaker box. So here's how the microinverters get plugged into the panels. The panels have these little leads here. They come up and around and go into that side of the microinverter and then the microinverter converts the electricity, comes out and plugs into this trunk cable. They are plugged in right now. They're not producing power quite yet. They are blinking red because it's saying that it's it recognizes that there is power being produced but it's not connected to the grid quite yet so it's not going to turn on. So we're looking at the mostly finished product here would be producing a lot of power today if we were hooked up to the grid, but not quite there yet. Did have the inspectors out the other day and seemed like everything was in order. We do have to have one more final inspection and then we can have the power company come out and change out the meter. So this is where our solar array connects in with our service. It comes out of this conduit right there up into the disconnect and our disconnect has uh, basically a little pull switch there that you can pull out and disconnect it. It goes through a couple fuses and goes back out this flexible conduit here down and around and into our meter. Uh, it has its own dedicated breaker right there. This is the actual net meter here and the net meter is uh, digital now. They switched it out and it can basically look at what we generate and what we use and net the two. I'd like to just go over some of the functionality of the Enphase Enlighten Manager website. Uh, this is what we use on a daily basis to monitor the production of our solar array. 
it's a very useful website because it aggregates all the data that comes from the in-phase microinverters and displays it in a very easy to understand format. What we've got here in front of us is the daily production totals from November of 2014 when we put the array into service until today or May of 2015. You can see that the production changes based on uh, daily weather events as well as seasonal solar irradiance. Sometimes you've got days that are nearly zero and other days just recently that have been as high as uh, 37 uh, kilowatt hours for the whole day. So if you go here to the top, you can change how you look at the data. Uh, the energy options give you overall production totals in watt hours or kilowatt hours, the same as you often see on your power bill. The power options give you production rates or watts. Uh, if I change this to look at a daily production for any given day, I can see how the array performed that day. So if I just click here on today, I can see that uh, we didn't have a great day. Uh, there's a lot of clouds today. It's been raining the last few days, uh, so it kind of went up and down throughout the whole day. If I click on the last seven days, you can see that there is uh, very wide variability in the production over any given period of time. If I want to look at the data in a slightly different way, I can come up here to the top and click on the View tab. And this will give me uh, an outlook based on a panel by panel basis. So I can look at it just from energy produced today, and it'll tell me that this panel up here in the corner produced 308 watt hours uh, for the day. If I change this to a different uh, range of days, I can say month to date, this panel has produced 17.5 kilowatt hours. You can also see what happens on a day-to-day -day basis uh, based on the power, so instantaneous power uh, production. So let's just use the May the 6th as the example here and we'll watch what happens throughout the day. You can see in the morning it ramps up slowly and pretty soon they hit their maximum production right around 225 watts per panel and then throughout the day they fluctuate up and down based on what's happening with the weather and then they shut off in the night. So that's another way to look at it. It's very useful uh, for understanding what's happening in your solar array. So there's a few other features of the site that are worth uh, talking about briefly. The reports tab here allows you to pull information out of this system so that it could be manipulated by uh, some other program if you wanted to do that. The devices tab allows you to look at each of the individual devices that's connected to your system. In this case, I've got the Envoy Communications Gateway as well as the microinverters that are connected. Uh, overall, this is a very well-designed site that allows you to understand a lot more about what is happening with your system than a traditional inverter would. Uh, next, I'd like to talk a little bit about what this system costs, as well as some of the governmental incentives that made this even more attractive than it already was. Throughout this project, we kept careful track of all of our expenditures. And the reason we did this is because the federal and state governments both have tax credits that are based on the cost of your system. In our case, we had about $2,700 in structure costs and another $12,000 or so dollars in solar panels, inverters, and other hardware. The total cost of our system ended up being just shy of $15,000. With the 30% federal tax credit and the $1,000 flat state tax credit, our total cost of our system ended up being just about $9,400. As I record this, we have just over a year's worth of data that indicates that our panels will cover about 70% of our annual usage. If we assume that the system will only last for the 25 years warranted by the manufacturers and a degradation of about a half a percent per year, then the electricity costs come in at about 5.4 cents per kilowatt hour. Electricity from the grid currently costs us about 10.9 cents per kilowatt hour. So without getting too far into the weeds on the calculations, the total savings in electricity costs over the life of the system ends up being just shy of $10,000. That jumps to about $13,000 if we assume that the system will last for at least 30 years. If you want to look at it from the standpoint of an investment, the ROI falls somewhere between 4 and 5.6%. Prior to us having this system, our annual electricity cost was about $1,200 per year. 
assuming that our system continues to generate about 70% of our total power, the payback is about 11 and a half years. Now granted, we did a lot of the work ourselves, so if you had somebody else do the install, the payback period would be a bit longer, but likely still in the 15 to 20 year range. But if you're willing to learn about the available systems and do a majority of the work yourself, it can be a great way to save money and reduce your reliance on carbon fuels.